Welcome back. I'm Lenore Moudou with the African Health Network update. What about 4,000 people gathered just outside Washington, D.C. this week for the M Health Summit? It was an opportunity to see firsthand what's happening in the mobile health sectors and what is coming up in the future. Tom Walker is president and CEO of Lions Gates Technologies. His company was an exhibitor at the M Health Summit. Here's a standard iPhone 5, and it is connected to a simple low-cost sensor. It's a very simple device that provides information on saturation for oxygen levels. Once an oxygen level gets below about 93, uh, then there should be some concern that there's some infection that's causing poor oxygen saturation. Because of that infection, you can use simple treatments like antibiotics to treat it, but without understanding that there is an infection, the individual or patient may not get the antibiotics they need. Of course, that's problematic with something like the normal. Nexercise is an application which helps patients lose weight. It allows people to track their physical activity and get rewards for doing that. And they can also compete with their friends and meet new people to get inspiration from. But when you first download the app, you can simply either sign up with Facebook or your email, and then it will, you know, you enter a little bit of information about yourself. And then what you do is you can create a social network with other users inside the app so you can communicate with them via various different chat rooms in the app. You see people are engaged with uh, different kind of conversations in it. And you, you build a circle of friends. And these friends then provide you motivation within, within the game. It's M Health or Mobile Health is the practice of medicine and public health supported by mobile devices. Richard Scarfo, director of the M Health Summit and vice president of events with Hims Media, says the summit attracts some of the key players in mobile health. The M Health Summit is an international event focused on connecting the mobile health ecosystem. So we have a unique offering here in that we have a conference and expo that offers all of the key sectors involved in mobile health. And that would be clinical research, technology, business, policy, and of course global health. Mobile health enable means of providing non-traditional models of care such as screenings and post-acute care. Some examples of M Health technology are text messaging and apps. Dr. Rolad Abdullahi, a health practitioner in Minnesota and a participant at the conference says Mobile technology has made her work easier in dealing with patients. Mobile technology has been very important in my providing health care to my patients. Um, at the clinic where I work at, we provide patients the opportunity to download an application where they can make appointments, see their lab results, as well as follow up with any other paperwork they need to complete. Statistics shows that there are over 700 million cell phone subscribers in Africa. The continent is the fastest growing mobile market in the world. In South Africa, the Mobile Alliance for Maternal Action, also known as MAMA, is taking advantage of the important cell phone penetration in the country to provide needed information and resources to women. So in South Africa, we have a straightforward SMS service, which is two messages per week, timed to the stage of pregnancy. We have a mobile website, it's askmama.mobi which is user blogs and first-person stories, quizzes, polls, comments. It's much more interactive. It's a community portal for moms. And then we also have a, an interactive quiz service that moms can dial into twice a week and answer questions to reinforce their knowledge. The M Health Summit was presented by Hims Media in partnership with the U.S. National Institutes of Health, NIH, the M Health Alliance, and the Foundation for the NIH. And to further discuss how mobile technology is being used in health, I'm joined in the studio by Kirsten Gagner, Gagner Global Director of the Mobile Alliance for Maternal Action, MAMA, an innovative partnership between USAID, Johnson & Johnson, United Nations Foundation, M Health Alliance, and Baby Center. And also joining us in the studio is Dr. Jonathan Monda, a physician in Nairobi and a user of the MAMA platform. Dr. Monda, welcome to In Focus, Ms. Gagner. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's Thank my you. pleasure. Let me start with you, Ms. Gardner. What drove the creation of MAMA? 
Sure, so MAMA really works to get vital, medically accurate, um, culturally sensitive healthcare information directly into the hands of the mothers who need it most. And we do this because we know that about 800 women die every day due to childbirth and pregnancy related causes, and about 3 million babies die every year in the first month of life. Most of these deaths are preventable, and most of these deaths occur in the developing world. And at the same time, we know that about a billion women across low to middle income countries now have access to mobile phones. So all of this comes together and uh, MAMA is being utilized on the ground. Right, exactly. Abs and speaking of utilizing on the ground, uh, Dr. Monda, you uh, use uh, the MAMA platform in your work with uh, AfriMobile. Tell us a little bit about what were some of the challenges that required you to em em embark in this program? So uh, back in Kenya, there's a, there's a very heavy mobile penetration, almost 70%. And at the same time, there's this huge population of women in uh, rural areas and also even in urban uh, informal settlements or slums. And these women, uh, for whatever economic reason or lack of uh, uh, the resources, they were not able to get to health facilities, to see health providers, whether they be nurses or doctors. And so uh, these, these two uh, issues sort of uh, came together just like what Mama is trying to do, where so many women have mobile phones but don't have the inf very best basic information which would, uh, which would help them during the pregnancy. And so um, the, the Mama messages allowed us to easily reach these women uh, many of whom have mobile phones, but may not have access to a medical provider or the health information. And Ms. Gachner, what are some of those messages that you send out? Right, so those messages range everything from medical messages, letting a woman know when she, she should be going in for health care, um, when she should be getting immunizations for herself or for her babies. But it also um, lets her know emotionally what she might be going through and that she might be tired and needs to be looking for support from those others that are in her family, the kinds of things that she should be eating. And all of these messages, we encourage organizations like Jonathan's to adapt them for their local environment. So we have messages that have been vetted by a high-level uh, medical advisory board, and they meet WHO and UNICEF standards. So we start with that framework that covers pregnancy and the first year of life. And a woman lets us know, like in Jonathan's program, um, what her estimated due date is um, so that we can then make sure that she gets messages at the right time for the stage of pregnancy she's in or the age of her baby. And then we work with organizations like Jonathan's to help them understand how they take the, that, those structured messages and really adapt them so that they are making them relevant for their particular situation. And Dr. Monda, what type of relevance have, have, have you seen in your work and what, how are the women responding to this? The women are very excited about the messages. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's very basic information that they never had that is coming very personally to them on their mobile phones. And uh, they're able to feel like there's somebody who cares, who's listening, who's attending to them two, three, four times a week right in their homes or right in their farms or at their places of work and uh, yeah and, and you know it, it just helps them improve taking care of themselves and their and their babies what about uh, the the physical contact do you think that it's something that maybe they're missing to have this physical contact with a doctor like you or is it are these messages uh, good enough for them to stay away uh, do, uh, are you concerned that maybe they will think this will replace a doctor well, we actually encourage in the messages for them to seek health care, and that's part of how they get localized, is many organizations localize them to actually let women know where their nearest clinic is, for example. And we tell them when they need to be getting in for an antenatal check or when they need to be bringing their baby in for a newborn check. So it certainly does not replace um, local, uh, in-person health care, but it does augment that information. And as Jonathan just said, it gives them really personalized information right in their own homes that they can really act on immediately. Things like, you know, if you're not feeling well, you may want to consider taking an iron pill. Um, things like that that they can really um, work on right in the moment when they have a baby, um, encouraging them to really do exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of the baby's life and to let them know what the signs are that their baby's vital and happy. And if they're not seeing those signs, then they need to take the baby in for a check. Now, for a program such as yours, what type of support, support are you receiving from other maybe partners or even the government? So uh, our program is still in its infancy, but uh, there's, there's, once we're able to show that we have a certain amount of impact uh, and uh, that there's, uh, there's 
potential for scalability of the program. Uh, we are hoping to speak to uh, the, the mobile operators back home, uh, get the Ministry of Health involved. Uh, we have contacts with uh, the e-health director in the Ministry of Health, for instance. Okay. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's something that they're, they're very excited about. Okay. And so, yeah, we're, we're, we're really gearing towards that. Great. And Ms. Gagner, you get the final word in 10 seconds. Speaking of impact, you know, your impact is over, reach over Africa, right? You it does. Across Africa and actually across the globe, working with organizations like Jonathan's and our own in-country programs, we have the potential to reach millions of women globally. Great, Ms. Gardner, thank you so much. Dr. Mona? Thank you. Thank you, thank for you. Both, both of you for coming here. And uh, Kister, Kistren Gardner is the Global Director of the Mobile Alliance for Maternal Action, and Dr. Manda is a physician in Nairobi, Kenya. And that's our Africa Health Network report for today. For more health news and developments, be sure to visit our website at africahealthnetwork.com.